4-6 Congruence in Right Triangles The objective of this video is to prove right triangles congruent using the hypotenuse leg theorem. And our focus question, which we will answer throughout this video, is how is right triangle congruence difference different from other types of triangle congruence? All right, here's your vocabulary. We got two vocabulary words. Hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. So if you look here, this red line is a hypotenuse. It's the side that is always opposite the right angle. Okay? So as it says here, the right angle always points, so to speak, to the hypotenuse. All right? So your hypotenuse is always opposite your right angle. Now, your hypotenuse will also always be your longest side. All right? Your hypotenuse will also always, always, always be your longest side of your triangle. Now, the legs of your right triangle are simply the other two sides of the right triangle. You have your hypotenuse, and then these two blue lines are your legs. All right, so that's your vocab for this video. Make sure you write that down. Now, theorem 4-6. This is the hypotenuse leg theorem, abbreviated HL. So this is your HL theorem. The theorem says, if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. All right, so here's that in picture form. Here we have triangle PQR and triangle XYZ. If you notice, this leg and this leg are congruent, and then both of the hypotenuses are congruent. All right. So since they're both right triangles, these triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. All right. So anytime you have two right triangles, if a leg in each triangle is marked congruent and the hypotenuse of each triangle are marked congruent, then those two right triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay? So again, just like we have here, a leg and the hypotenuse, since both pairs are marked congruent, these two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg theorem. So that means that the third side is congruent, that this angle is congruent to this angle, and of course this angle is congruent to this angle. Because once you prove them congruent, then all the corresponding parts are congruent. That's what we learned in the last video. All right. Now, there's a couple of key conditions or key concepts for the hypotenuse leg theorem. All right. To use the HL theorem, the triangles must meet three conditions. Here are those three conditions. Number one, you have to have two right triangles. If you do not have two right triangles, you cannot use HL theorem. Period. Can't use it. Number two, the triangles have to have congruent hypotenuses. All right, so if you look up here, this passes condition one, the right triangles. It passes condition two because the hypotenuses are congruent. And then condition three, there is one pair of congruent legs. And it passes that one as well because there you have one pair of congruent legs. So therefore, these are congruent by HL theorem. All right, remember these three conditions. All right, your triangles have to pass all three conditions in order to be congruent by HL theorem. All right. Now, let's look at this problem. We have two triangles here. All right, R, the, okay, hold up. So is triangle A, B, E, congruent 
to triangle DBE. Explain. So let's look at these two triangles. Let's see if they pass our conditions. Condition number one, are they right triangles? Look at them. Right angle, right angle. Yes, they're right triangles. Number two, are the hypotenuses congruent? Okay, the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, so it's this side and this triangle. Opposite, okay. So is side BE congruent to itself? Yes, it is, by reflexive property. And number three, do we have one pair congruent, I'm abbreviating, one pair of congruent legs? Do we have that? Well, we have BA marked congruent to DE. So do we have one pair of congruent legs? Yes, we do. So therefore, these triangles are congruent. So triangle Abe is congruent to triangle DBE by HL theorem. All right. Since, since both of these triangles passed all three conditions, therefore, they are congruent by HL theorem. All right. Now, let's look at this other problem. We got variables now. Okay. It says, for what values x and y are the triangles congruent by HL theorem? All right. So, this is our hypotenuse. We'll label it H. And then across from the right angle, this is our hypotenuse. This is a leg. And this is a leg. So, we know that the pair of legs have to be congruent. All right. So, well, first let's look at our conditions. Are they right triangles? Yes, they are. Number two, the hypotenuses have to be congruent. All right, the hypotenuses have to be congruent. So, a hypotenuse on this one is x plus 3. We know that has to equal 3y. Okay? So, for our hypotenuses to be congruent, we know that this case must be met. All right, what we also know is that for number three, we have to have one pair of congruent legs. Okay, so that means that x will have to equal y plus one. All right, so now we have to solve these for x and y. But if you notice, there's two variables in each one. So you might ask, well, how are we supposed to do this? Well, what we want to do is we want to look to see if x is equal to something or y is equal to something. What do I mean by that? Well, here we have 3y equal to x plus 3. Okay, so we don't have just a single x equal to something. But over here we have x equals y plus 1. All right, so we know x is equal to y plus 1. So what we can do is take this y plus 1 and plug it in for that x right there. Okay, because this tells us, this statement tells us y equals I mean, x equals y plus 1, so we can go y plus 1 plus 3 equals 3y, okay? And now we, now we can solve for y, and once we solve for y, we can plug it back in and find x. So subtract the y from both sides. So 4 equals 2y, divide 2, divide 2, y equals 2. Now, we also need to find the value of x. Well, since x equals y plus 1, just plug the 2 into here. So x equals 2 plus 1, or I'm going to write it down here, x equals 3. All right, make sure, make sure, make sure you know how to do this, OK? You just find out what x or y is equal to, like I did. You set it equal, or substitute it in, and solve it out for y. If this hadn't been the case and we would have had to use this, 
we could have solved this for x just by subtracting 3 from both sides, and then we'd have x equals 3y minus 3. And then we could have substituted it in and solved that way. Okay? Moving on. Here's a u try. So we need to use this picture. It says triangle ABC and triangle PQR are right triangular sections of a fire escape as shown. Is each story of the building the same height? Explain. So I'll pause the video, take about take a few minutes and figure this out. Alright, so we know the two we know these two triangles are right triangles. So let's see if they're congruent. So let's see if we can use the HL theorem and prove them congruent. Alright, so they've got to pass the three conditions. Number one, are they right triangles? Well, yes, they are because they told us they are. All right, they said they're right triangular sections, so we know they're right triangles. So it passed this condition one. Number two, are, are the hypotenuses congruent? Well, let's look. This is hypotenuse of one. You can't see that. This is that you still can't see it. That's the hypotenuse of one. That's the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse of the other, and they're labeled congruent. So yes, the hypotenuses are congruent. Number three, do we have one pair of congruent legs? Well, we have side AB is a leg, side PQ is a leg. They're both marked congruent, so yes. Okay, so our triangles are congruent by the HL theorem. Okay, let me write that down. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by HL theorem. Okay, so now that we know the triangles are congruent by HL theorem, we need to look to see if we can tell if the um, if both stories of the building are the same height. Alright, well if you look, CB, side CB, represents the height of the top story, and the bottom story is represented by, uh, what is that letter supposed to be? R. Okay, they messed up the R. RQ. Do we know if CB is congruent to RQ? Well, if you remember from last video, once you prove the triangle is congruent, all corresponding parts are therefore also congruent. So does, does side CB correspond to side RQ? Yes, it does. So therefore, they are congruent by C, P, C, T, C. All right? They are congruent, and they are the same height because of C, P, C, T, C. All right? We proved the triangle is congruent. The heights are corresponding parts of both triangles. So therefore, yes, they are congruent. All right? Here's that focus question we saw at the beginning. It says, how is right triangle congruence different from other types of triangle congruence? Answer, right triangles have many special properties. Yes, they do. It says, if a pair of right triangles has one pair of legs, of congruent legs, and congruent hypotenuses, then they are congruent. All right? Because, I don't know if you've realized this, but this is actually the SSA theorem. Because you have two sides and an angle, and the angle is not between the congruent sides. So this is actually the SSA theorem. But it only applies to right triangles, and it is called the HL theorem, not the SSA for obvious reasons. Okay? So just keep in mind that the HL theorem only works for hypotenuse legs. I mean, sorry, for right triangles. Because you have to have a right triangle to have a hypotenuse anyway. Okay? So HL theorem, only right triangles. All right? Here's your ticket in the door. Number one, are the two triangles congruent? If so, write a congruent statement. Now, a congruent statement, just in case you forgot, okay, 
a congruent statement is triangle. I'm just going to make something up here. X, Y, Z congruent to triangle D, E, F. Okay, that is a congruent statement. All right. So, figure out if, for one and two, figure out if those triangles are congruent to each other. If they are, write a congruent statement. Remember to keep corresponding vertices in the same order. Okay. Number three, a right triangle has side lengths of 5, 12, and 13. What is the length of the hypotenuse and how do you know? And number four, your classmate says there is not enough information to determine whether the two triangles below are congruent. Is your classmate correct? Explain. So if they are correct, say yes, this is why there's not enough information. If they're not correct, say no, and here's how they're congruent. All right? So make sure you have this ready when you come to class, and I'll have the answers on the board. And good luck.